is studio. Um, as you can see, it's kind of, we have like a viewport here, we have a list of tools up here, we have a color palette, a step list. Um, if you guys are coming from the LDRAW system, you guys know where my steps are there, but I'll be going over what we can do with steps later. And then we have our building palette down here, which if I press the space bar, I can just pull it up, and it has a direct tie with our Brooklyn catalog. So whatever you see here is available on Brooklyn. And after that, so a really great thing about the building palette is that, uh, well first it's nice and big for you to just browse through, but the great thing is that if you guys know your Brooklyn ID numbers, you can start searching for stuff like that. So it's very fast building. I know that I want to use a 4085D, so I could just type it up. And it's just really nice that as I'm working, let's say I can just put that as a thing, I just know, like I memorize a lot of my part numbers, so I could just, without having to like uh, cycle through everything, I could just search for it, and then now you can see that it's two by four brick. So that's a great thing about the brick palette. And uh, some other cool features we have <laughs> yeah, I'm so used to my Mac that this Windows is very driving me crazy right now. So another great thing is that here, uh, while it also shows my recent placed bricks, I can also add my favorite bricks, but I can also add a custom folder. So if I have a set amount of parts that I want to work on a project, I could just say, let's say, I'm creating something for Seattle. And now as I go through I could just add it to my Seattle folder. So if I already have a planned parts list for a project I'm working on, it's a great way to keep track of all the parts without having to constantly just go through the, you know, all the different categories. So yeah, I love that. And another fun feature we have is um, here. Let's say I want to build like, right, like Market Street, 10190. Um, so I can import it into the scene, which will literally lay out every single part of the viewport. I'm going to skip that for now because Market Street is a huge set, but let's say I want to import it as a folder in my brick palette. I import, it's going to take a little bit, and then now when I go up, go into my 10190 folder, it has every part of the Market Street readily available for me. So if you like building sets in your, I know a lot of people, people use LDB to build sets that they couldn't afford or just couldn't find. So it's a great way to just, you know, also just build sets within the program itself, without having to pay anything. Mm -hmm. So this is our building palette. Next, we have our color palette. So here, we have the list of colors. Another great thing is I love being able to search. So here, I know I want to like blue <coughs> thread. It's quick, I can find it, it's right there for me. Um, another cool thing is I can also add favorite colors. I know I use black, like bluish gray, dark bluish gray all the time, so I can go in, let's clear my search. black, I can add it to my favorite colors, and that will be saved every time you open up the video, so you have quick access to just change colors on the fly. And another thing I realized that with building mobs is that you usually have a, a color palette you work with, so our program will keep track of every color you use within your studio, so um, now I know since most of my palette is going to be using gray and white, I can just always have it on quick access, so I don't have to keep choosing the color over and over again. And because it's integrated with our gray catalog system, Bricklink, my, one of my favorite features is this, is that I can hide unavailable colors. So now here, it's only showing me colors that I can actually buy. So never again will I import a, my parts into a laundry list and find that, oh my god, this part doesn't exist. Yeah, so <laughs> that has happened to me so many times where I would have to go back on my mob, change my whole design because that one part actually doesn't exist. So. It's, it's just like a great, yeah, I just love the integration with the Brickland catalog. Alex, when you say doesn't exist, do you mean doesn't exist legally within LEGO or has never existed before? Uh, like for instance, uh, 48 by 48 trans clear base plate exists. I've got one in my store. If it's available on the Bricklink market, like a seller okay. selling it, it'll show up here. Okay. So every known color will be showing up. So here. not not a legal Lego. Not a legal Lego color, color but if it's somehow available to get and you can buy it somewhere in the world, it's going to be available for you to use here. All right. Okay. Excellent. Like flash. Okay. Next, we have. Uh, I'll just go over to the tools a little bit. So here, um, let me. I'll, 
So I will desktop. So I we prepared a little mock for you guys in preparation for Seattle. Openings. Yeah, name it and that's a teacher. What's going on? Try just double clicking the file when you go to open beta Genius, you never heard better than me. something we just prepared ahead of time for Seattle. It's, if you guys can tell, that's the Seattle Center right here. If you guys didn't know, it has a little gold roof. If you guys check it out in Google Street View, there's a BrickCon logo. This is our uh, this is our way of the EMP Museum. It kind of doesn't look like it. <laughs> but at this scale, it was really hard. <laughs> and then we have the monorail system. And then, of course, we have the space dance. So. Now I can show you guys, if you guys are coming from LDB, you guys are going to know these select tools. But here, let's say I want to select all the medium and zero bricks done, and then I could just change it all to red if I want to. It's very quick. Um, next select tool is by type. So I only want uh, grills. It selects every grill. But if I want every, let's say, slope piece, but in that color, it will only select that group. So once again, I can just quickly change it to something else. And then the next um, tool is it will whatever you click, it will also select whatever it's connected to. So, but the thing is with this model, it's connected to everything. So, <laughs> but there's some certain instances where it's very helpful, where you just want to move just a little section of parts. You know, uh -huh. so there we go. Uh, and next, we have one. So, see, people seem to really like this tool. Is that? Back to my default select. Uh -oh. Here, uh, that's not a good example. Here. Let's just start over. Go back over to five. Go and save it. So now I go into let's say bar. Okay. Oh, I didn't even show you guys, but we have um, snap functionality. So <laughs> like. Um, it will, it's going to detect uh, certain types of connections. So here, a clip connects to a bar. So it's going to automatically detect that, and I can clip it on. And then the thing is with the niche tool, let's make another one. I'll select those two. And then now, kind of like in real life, everything should move together. So once I start to rotate stuff, uh -huh. it knows that it's connected. So it's going to move the whole thing together. So it behaves like real bricks where you can. <laughs> Because if, if L draw, I would have to move one, then move the other, and it's just a huge, complicated mess. And now I can just do this. Does that work with gear, like where you can do gear in that too? Um, we don't have that support yet. I know certain programs like uh, SR3 Builder does support gear and stuff like that, but it's always, we can keep improving this product, and I definitely we plan to do that in the future. No, 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 no. That's what I'm actually getting to right next. So here, I know that a lot of you are coming from the LDL system where you're allowed to do manual placement of bricks and then you can do a legal connection. So like a very easy way to show this is let's say I go to plates, I'll pick something like this, like this, <laughs> and let's say like one of my one of the first illegal bills I ever learned as a kid was shoving a plate in between studs. Mm -hmm. um, in L LDD, you would never be able to do that because it's going to be like, you're making a collision, it's illegal. But let's say I can just go in. So this little tool here lets me override everything and it, it makes me enter a manual mode. Once I'm in the manual mode, just like LDR, I could choose my grid system. So here, I'm going to choose a medium grid. Let's first get it lined up. And then... Smaller grid. I think I'm. A, that should be it. And then now, I have I have a legal connection there, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, does that count as connected for the selection and stuff like that? Oh, uh, I don't think so, because it's not considered a true connection. 
because if you, uh, we followed all the legal connections allowed by Lego. So something like this. Well, could you make it like group them together so they're connected? Yeah. Yeah. Group it? Could you merge them or something with that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So here, I mean, another part I need to go into is with our step list, while we can create steps, if I select multiple bricks, it's going to ask me, do I want to create a sub model with it? So I can prove it. And then later on, when I show the kind of step instruction viewer, it recognizes these sub models. But I'll get to that part later. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I also forgot to tell you, uh, for those Eldraw fans, um, I know you guys like working with the traditional CAD software. So here, let's say I want a, a top view, or that's the bottom view, my bad. So if you like working in the traditional CAD layout, you can do as many viewports as you want. Uh, the bigger screen you, can, you have, you can have more. So, so here I can even add another one, and I can keep adding more and more, but it's gonna you know, <laughs> slow it down. But here, I just, get a, I, I just like the simple view the best. I rarely use other views. Can you import models from Lego Digital Designer or Eldraw easily? Yes. I will. Oh, actually, this is not my computer, so but it handles both LDD or LXF files and Eldraw files. So we want you to be able to whatever program you use now. I want you guys to switch to Brickman Studio because you can open the files and continue. <laughs> <laughs> you can import vector files. No, but I was very concerned that just so I could see an image in the background at all times, just as a reference, but. Uh, I haven't gone around to implementing it yet, but it's definitely something I'm looking into because every time I'm building, I'm probably looking at like a picture reference, so it would be cool to kind of just have it floating in the background a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then the one last kind of feature, so another cool thing that the Bricklink integration affords is that I could go into my model info and I know the price of my model. So here, it's $29. I could go in here and check. It's, it's something really expensive. So right here, this Technic Axle, the price of one is $4.65. So as I'm building, if I feel like one part is too expensive, I could plan ahead. I'll never be surprised by the price I see once I go over to Brooklyn. So if you guys are budget conscious, as you're building, you can always be on track. What is that price based on? Um, so right now it's the six months average, the oh, past wow. percent. So here I can choose. Do I actually no, I lied. It was a current hundred percent average. But you could choose which uh, criteria you wanted in, and it's based on new prices. Okay. Just as you know. But not as one supplier. So you might have to do several orders to get. Them. Yeah, that's the average price. So it's not like a guarantee that you <laughs> your mock is good in that. Yeah. Is it based on price or sale price? Because right now the bottom list is based upon price which doesn't really show the true cost of the item. Well, he, he, uh, he, we buy it based on sale price. price. You guys have everything based so, on price. So, I mean, the current sale is what they're asking for. But then the pat last six months sales is the actual price that people paid. So we support both types. Mm -hmm. And also other currencies. Huh? Uh, other currencies, not just the law. Yes, your the currencies. <laughs> and another cool thing is, let's say um, I want to limit myself, and let's say I want to only build in a 24 by 24 grid. So I can force myself. So now it says, that, okay. Yeah, so this one doesn't fit in it, but here it, can say, it just stays at that size. So I can also just chop it off. And then the last functionality, oh, but then Henry, are you connected for the build together? Um, hopefully you can get this to work. But <laughs> one cool thing is that I can also, it's connected to Bricklink, so I'm gonna log into my account. Log in. Just tell me when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so <laughs> what, <laughs> what I really like here is that, kind of like if you guys use uh, Google Documents, you can work together on the same document. So when I talked to some mock builders here last time at the conventions, I th they, do, they do things like having building relays where they 
Steve. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Any admins in here? Okay, so I can't, I, I, don't, I don't think I can show it right now, maybe. Let's see how much time that is. So we have the basics for things like you know copy, cut, paste, and I haven't decided to get on full keyboard shortcuts. But I mean I use cat software all the time, and keyboards are definitely essential for programs like this. So it will be great. Caps lock on. Henry, do you see this IP number? Yeah. Okay. So now I started. I and here I see that Hanel has joined my group. And Hanel, can you just move something for me? <laughs> so now we can work on the same file at the same time together. So if you ever want to build with a friend that's you know you're not physically close to, you guys can build together on our program and then just have fun, just chill. <laughs> could you could you merge different files if you load your file with this? Oh, you load his file. Oh, just, so he imported one of his files, and now I don't, I don't like this. I'm going to delete his. <laughs> Is that right now it's kind of like a free for all? You can just edit your friend's model as he's building it, so you can really prank him. But yeah, can he undo your action? Uh, or, or does he have to redo his action? Can you undo my delete? I can. But you can. I, only I can. I can. I, so right now, oh, okay. So it's so, so only your so action. He can redo it, but he can't undo another. my action. Yeah, my action is just independent of his actions. So yeah, that's just a, right now it's only in the early stages, so we're only allowing four uh, connections at the same time. But in the future, if this feature becomes very popular, we can always you know, expand it to allow more connections and have a slightly easier interface than using like I guess like IP addresses and port numbers. But I think right now it's just completely it just works so that you just build with your friend. So you can close and you can build. Does the program handle offline mode as well? I mean, it, this program will run fine offline, but you just can't see like some functionality, like which I'm going to go over now, like checking the prices. If you're offline, it'll just use the, the last saved price they have on hand, but you won't. Prices are updated daily, so there's certain stuff that are connected to the internet. But if you just want to purely build, you don't need an internet connection. Or something. So the catalog's all on. Yeah. All so, the parts are on. So um, every time you start. Uh, the studio, it's going to check for updates, and if there's an update, it'll automatically download it. So updates include like new parts and just some new features and stuff like that. If you're offline, can um, is is the are the bricks that you're pulling from what were for sale on Brickly last time you were online? Like, say, if you want to use a rare part that's mm -hmm. only for sale every so day, so it's online. updated daily. So okay. just in case you just had to turn on your internet for a long time, it would just use the last possible update that was given. Okay. So yeah, so it should be pretty pretty recent. So yeah. And that really concludes the studio side, but now I want to get into kind of even another, also another question there yes. before you leave that. Uh-huh. And it might just be I was having trouble. I've only dabbled with LBD and got very frustrated. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Take your model and say, oh I want to add another row of bricks underneath. Another row of bricks underneath? Yeah, I want to build it up higher. You want to elevate I don't want to have, I want to elevate it, but I don't want to have to tear it all down and put bricks underneath. Well, so I couldn't enough. figure it out with LED. So that's really how bad LED was. It wouldn't be yeah, as so so Or let, let me make this harder. I want to insert it in the middle. I want to split the model in half and put a red roll of bricks between the, the base and the black one. Between, oh, so okay. I want to, you know, I want to select half of it, separate it, uh -huh. but I, oh, I want to insert okay. something in the middle. Maybe so I here, have a window in the middle of a building or something. This yeah. would be a good place to show, let's say, the left. Okay, now front view. Front view. 
I want to separate only, oh, you know what? Let me release this submodel. I want to separate the black from everything else, but it seems like there's one part in the Seattle and over here. I can just move this guy. So now my black base is separate from everything okay. else. So yeah, because I could not figure that out. I see. Really it's really a lot of just basically <laughs> choosing the right camera angle and selecting the right yes. parts. Okay. There's no like very easy automatic way of doing it, but we're trying to give you all the right tools yeah, so that you can do something. Like and you can do it easily. You don't have to go through some menu system. No, no, it's yeah. just, yeah. just yeah. trying to get it to the right camera. Yeah. 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 But here, to move on to, uh, definitely I'll answer more questions after because I think we'll have definitely have time for Q&A, but um, let me just get into the next part. So here, let's say I'm happy with my model. I will Okay, and then I want to buy the parts for this piece, right? I want to share it with the world. So now I could go under BrickLink, I could say upload to my models or it should say my base plates. Yeah, I'm going to click upload. It's going to take a while to upload. It's loading. Internet's a little bit slow right now. OK. I'm going to press go view. And go here. So these are pages that we're working on in Brooklyn right now. They're um, not viewable by the public, but this is a test server that we're running. So here, you can see that Seattle New is existing right here. So if I, if I just want to not share it, I can just directly add it to my water list right now, choose my conditions, and um, do that. And so it'll be, I'll show you the water list later, but here, I want to share it with the world. So right now, it's an under private, but I want to publish my creation. Let's give it a better name. Here, we have a new image. Uh, I don't have an image written there, but I can give it a description. Check out my model. <laughs> <laughs> here it will be a building. I can edit tags so that people can find it better. It will be Seattle, space, oh God, I can't it. space noodle, EMP here. Okay, three tags. I want other people to be able to download my model because I, you know, I love sharing my designs. I click save editing, and now I could go and view it. So another ex uh, thing I'm very excited to show you guys is that who here has tried to make instructions through LPUB? Ah. <laughs> was it, how was your experience with it? Well, I'm a computer programmer, so. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> if you guys ever tried to do LPUB, it's very, very complicated. So for every step, you have to like, tell it the camera angle, tell it to do this. A lot of times it breaks and crashes, so I hated using it but I, I made a lot for my job. If you guys ever did like the uh, knock shop, but here. Well, one first thing is that we have a 3D viewer so that people can explore my model in space, uh, in the space. So here is cool, cool, yeah. But here, oh wait. Just in case this doesn't, doesn't work, we had a little technical issue before. Oh, it works, okay. The thing is, I did not separate into the right steps. I'm really sorry, but on here, what you can see is that for every step, it shows you like what parts you need, and because you can rotate the model, you don't really need to set a camera angle for it. And if I click it, um, here, this is a terrible model shot. Like here, you can see, let's say, maybe the MSI would be better here. I had another one loaded up. So here is another model. So this is the first step, and then let's say I'm not exactly sure where this part is. I can click it, and then it will highlight it for me. Oh, so nice. no longer do I need a static instructions where it's just one view. I can now rotate my model, make sure that I'm putting it in the right places, and now we want this to be like the future of digital instructions. You no longer need a printed version. You just go upload it. As long as you lay out your steps in an order that you think it's uh, readable, it would directly translate to this program so that anyone can come in and now build my model. <laughs> so here I can cycle through the steps and you can see it build up and every single time I could just, hey, I'm not sure where this brick is, I click it and I, I see the little highlight over there. Oh, nice. So 
we really want this platform to be all about sharing your model, letting other people build your model, either digitally or in real life, because what I can do is, let's say I can go back to this one. Let's say I'm a guest. I'm not Alexander. I'm just some other guy. I really like the Seattle lock. So I can first look at the steps, and I can just add the parts to my want list so that if I just want to build it in real life, I can order the parts, go come back to this page and build it. So that's like the kind of ecosystem you want to set up with uh, Bricklink Build and Studio. If not already available, will it be possible to uh, have these instructions up, like have my instructions up for sale versus just So in them? the beginning of this, uh, we are good just, we want to kind of just build up, get a lot of uh, uploads. So we're not going to have any commercial factors in it yet until we get to a stable point. Mm -hmm. And then we're definitely going to allow people to sell it. Because let's say if you work you know, a lot of hours on a design, you're very proud of it, like, you, know, you don't have to give it away for free. And I'm sure people will be uh, very willing to buy it. So from the stuff that we learned through the mock shop, we've been going towards this direction where you just order the parts. You don't have to depend on one seller to kind of sell your mock anymore. You could just depend, you could just order from multiple sellers and just get the parts. You can always build it. I have a quick question. Yes. Is there going to be a way for you to be like download like this instruction type format offline? So like if you know I want to build my model, I don't have to go through oh sitting on the break link, logging in, opening all this up. Just I see. So it, what we have planned in the future is also having an instruction editor. So let's say I could, uh, this is the very simple view where you're allowed to rotate the camera and, the, and that, but with the instruction viewer, I could assign a view that I wanted to for each step. And it will make it easier than no pub, but it's not, um, I don't think it's a very high priority feature right now, just because we think you could get away with this, but we definitely want to maybe support kind of having a printed, uh, more PDF style. Also. Yeah, but if you're offline, you're going to be able to access this, right? Yeah. yeah. So it would be nice to have you know, the ability to be able to use that without doing anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the thing is, let's say if they just send you the I.O. file, you could just use your actual offline editor to just go through the steps anyways. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so yeah, I'll think about that. So, and I also want to show you, if you guys, I'm not sure how many of you guys have used a new model list feature, but I also want to show you guys a bit about it. So before, I created a model list out of Seattle. So, it's going, it's going. Wait, Henry, if I click to the process server, would there be any issues with the model list? JY, I can, I can connect to their normal Wi-Fi and you can stop using your data. Because I could just use the real website, not the proxy server. Oh, what do you mean? But they have normal Wi-Fi, but for the, for, to show the wireless, I could just use a, the actual website. Yeah, so I think I'll just do that. So right now I'm connected through a proxy, but here I'm pretty sure I could connect to this guy. The one of this feature. Oh, the feature Yeah, yeah. So I just gotta do the live site instead. Hold on, let me just give me a moment to change some settings. So now we're on the live site. I hope you guys checked out this article about one of our sellers, Constructible, if you guys ever ordered from him. But let me log in again. So who here has used a new one in this feature? Okay, less than half of you, so this would be a great demonstration. It's great, I love it. It's really good. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to list, which should I buy? Green grocer? <laughs> you can try it, but it's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. I, will, yeah. you know, I, I will go with something a little bit yeah. yeah. Go with smaller. So, if you guys know, Stephen Paxiasi made the mini rover, Curiosity rover. This is his design, I love it. But um, let me just switch off this one part, please. Actually, no, this should be fine. 
me just double check that all the parts are okay. All right, so now I go to buy all. So if you guys haven't checked this out, this is our new kind of buying a one list feature. Here, I can choose which one list to buy. If I want to buy multiple one list, I can select them, and now they also show up here. But I only want to buy the pack that's rover for now. And then I also can disable that. So let's say I know I have plenty of white you know, one by one bricks, so I could just deselect that so I don't try to buy it. But for this sake, I'll just keep everything enabled. I'll go to the next step, which is finding stores. So here, it's also giving me a preview of my I wanted items. Um, these are the stores that I can choose from, and this is a list that I can curate. So here, um, let me first set it to USA, because I like paying low shipping costs. Um, it's all good. Okay, now it's gonna look for, ooh, so all those stores have all those parts in that one? Not all those parts. So here it tells me this store has 51 out of 53. So if I click on the <coughs> actual state, it, it shows me what I can buy. Mm -hmm. So in this one planet brick, That's cool. every part in green means they have everything. I'm sure I can find here, he doesn't have that one. All right. And anything in, anything in yellow means that he only has partial. So let me go to this one, 49. Here I can see that, okay, they're all green, 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 green. <laughs> Brick. No, like load more. Okay, I'll just pick a small store with very low feedback. That they shouldn't have a lot. Okay, so just, I, this should be fine. So here, here, all green parts. I'm doing it. He's missing this, missing this. I'm just trying to find an example of a yellow one. <laughs> oh, right here. Here, it's there. It shows me that this store can only give me four out of six of this tire, but I like that. I mean, like I still want to buy towards my thing. But here, let's um, actually let's just use that store there. That one. Thank you, Charlotte. What a great question. <laughs> okay, now. Let's say, um, so when I talked with some buyers, they told me that their strategy is they pick the most expensive part in their one list first so that they could kind of narrow it down by like that. So let's say, um, what do you guys think is the most expensive part or rare part in here? Do you, anyone want to call that something? The rare part? I don't know the number of that. cool. I have okay, but here, let's, do, let's just say that for some example, this axle technique as a whole is rare. If I click this part, it means that it's gonna only show stores that have this part. But if I click these three, now it's only looking for stores that make sure to have these three parts. So that if I really wanna prioritize some parts first, I could have them selected so that these stores will definitely have, will definitely have these parts. So it is also searching for the other parts on the list, but? Yes, but putting a priority on these three parts. So what I could do is I could do it manually. Let's say I like the store is looking good, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to select it. <laughs> Let me refresh page. Oh, oh no. 